This guide shows you what to do if you get this message here saying Internet Explorer is no longer supported or you might get a message saying we'll soon stop supporting this browser for best experience, please update your browser. Or again, you might go to something like this saying the latest version of whatever website is not supported on your browser, please use a supported browser. Now, if you get that message, then it sounds like that you're probably going to be using Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer is a very old, outdated web browser that is no longer supported. It's no longer secure, it's not being updated with security updates and it's not being updated to support the latest technology. So really you shouldn't be using it. Certainly shouldn't be using it for online banking or making any kind of purchases because it's quite possible that you could get hacked if you're still using it. Now, if you want to check to see whether you are using Internet Explorer or not, then you can click on the cog in the top right hand corner of the screen here if there is one and then move your mouse down to about Internet Explorer and there you go straight away it's given it away you're using Internet Explorer if you see that about Internet Explorer another way you can check if you haven't got the cog up here in the top right hand corner of the screen you can hold down the ALT key now the ALT key is in the bottom row of keys on your keyboard usually to the left of the space bar and then tap the letter X and then let go of the ALT key and then you'll see this menu appear and again if you've got anywhere listed in here about Internet Explorer then you are using Internet Explorer stop using it use another browser this is how you get another browser well first of all come out of Internet Explorer okay and then we want to check to see whether we've already got another browser on the system because if we have all we can do is we can just simply go over to it. So click on the start button in the bottom left hand corner of the screen and just type Chrome, C-H-R-O-M-E. Now, if you see Google Chrome appear just here with that logo there, then you can click on it and go into it and just basically start using it just in the same way that you would use the ordinary Internet Explorer. So you'll get Google come up here hopefully and then you can just click into the search box just here and you can type whatever you want to search for and press enter or return and up comes Google with the search results and you can click on any one of these to go in to the web page and we'll see for instance if I go into Jackie Lawson so uh, I can just click up in the bar at the top of the screen here and just start to type Jackie Lawson and then when Jackie Lawson comes up I can click on down there any one of these Jackie Lawson's and up it will come and if I go into the website now as you remember before I got that message saying Internet Explorer is no longer supported as you can see here don't get that message and I can log in or, or select a card or, or whatever. And also if I go to YouTube, so I'm just gonna click into the bar at the top of the screen and type in there youtube.com. Again, again, no message at the top of the screen saying your browser will no longer be supported soon. So I can click on the cross in the top right hand corner there to come out of it. Now, if you haven't got Google Chrome on your system, let's have a look to see what else you've got. So click on the start button and perhaps the next thing to do is type edge. So type Edge and if Microsoft Edge comes up in there with that logo or there might be a new updated logo which I'll put on the screen right now, this logo just here, then again click on it and you can go into Microsoft Edge which again gives you a, a search box here or up here that you can search for stuff in. Um, I'm going to click on the cross there to come out of it. Another one you can look for is Firefox so again click on the start button in the bottom left hand corner of the screen and type Firefox and again if Firefox comes up with this logo here you can click on it go into it you might get an update box appear on the screen if it says uh, it needs your permission say yes to it and then you might get this screen come up saying you're using the latest version of Firefox if you do just click on the cross up the top there next to what's new with Firefox and there we go we get the search box come up on the screen and again you can you can search for anything you like on there but what if you've got no other browsers then what you can do is if we go back into Internet Explorer 
then we move our mouse up to the address bar right at the top of the screen, the one just to the right of the two arrows going left and right. Then with your mouse over whatever's in there, left click once, whatever's in there will become highlighted in blue, then press the backspace or the delete key on your keyboard once. That will delete whatever's in there. And then you need to type google.co.uk forward slash chrome, C-H-R-O-M-E. Then press enter or return on your keyboard. You should now see this page appear. It's optional whether you take the tick out of this box or not, whether or not you wanna help make Google Chrome better by automatically sending usage stats and crash reports to Google. I'm gonna untick it, so I'll just move my mouse over the tick and left click once and the tick will disappear. Then move your mouse over Download Chrome, that big blue button there, and left click once. You'll see at the bottom of the screen there, it says, do you want to run or save Chrome setup.exe from dl.google.com? Move your mouse over Save and left click once. It will then download and then after a while, it will say the Chrome setup.exe download has completed. When you see this, move your mouse over Run and left click once. After a little while, you'll see this come up saying, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Well, as long as it says Google Update Setup and the verified publisher is Google LLC, then move your mouse over Yes and left click once. It will now start to download and install. This bit might take a little bit of time depending on the speed of your internet connection. Now, I'm going to pause this video and we'll come back to it when it's nearing the end of the installation. And there we go, it's now installed. So the box disappears and then hopefully after a few seconds, Google Chrome should load. And there we go, Google Chrome has now loaded. Now, mine hasn't come up full screen, so what you can do is you can move your mouse over this button here, the Maximize button, which is in the top right-hand corner of the screen, just to the left of the cross. Click that once, and that brings it up full screen. And then we can click on Get Started here. So it's saying here, you can add bookmarks to your favorite Google apps. So it's gonna add bookmarks to Gmail, YouTube, and Maps. If you don't want those uh, bookmarks, the bookmarks are basically the equivalent of favorites in Internet Explorer. If you don't want them, you can untick just by clicking on the tick up there, and that will stop them from being imported. So then we can click skip if we want to, but if you wanted any bookmarks left on there, like YouTube for instance, we can click next. Okay, so we can also pick a background here. Now I would say just go with the default, plain white, simple. It's gonna slow your computer down if you use any of these other ones. So uh, just click default, then click next. Okay, and then it's asking to set Chrome as your default browser. That means whenever the system has to open up the internet, it will open up Google Chrome instead of um, Internet Explorer. Now, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. You can click skip, but if you click set as default, then if you're running Windows 10 or Windows 8, you might see a box similar to this appear whereby all you do is you just click on whatever's below web browser and then select Google Chrome. So click Google Chrome. And that will make Google Chrome your default web browser. But like I say, that is optional. So we can click on the cross just up here, just to close this box down. And there we go. It's given us the opportunity to sign in and turn on sync to get your bookmarks in on all your devices. But I'm just gonna say no thanks to that at the moment. So move my mouse over no thanks and left click once. And there we go, Google Chrome has now loaded. Now as an extra touch, what we can do is we can pin Google Chrome to the taskbar at the bottom of the screen. Again, this is purely optional. So just move your mouse over this Google Chrome icon down at the bottom of the screen there, and then click the right mouse button. That's the button on the right hand side of the mouse, not the left. 
and then move your mouse up to pin to taskbar. With your mouse pointer over pin to taskbar, click the left mouse button and that will ensure there's always a Google Chrome icon at the bottom of the screen to enable you to get into Google Chrome. So let's close this down. So move to close it down, we just move our mouse over the cross in the top right hand corner of the screen, left click once, and then we can also close down Internet Explorer as we've finished with that for the moment. So again, move your mouse over the cross in the top right hand corner of the screen and left click once. So there we go, as we can see on the desktop now, we've got Google Chrome there, and we've also got Google Chrome at the bottom of the screen. Doesn't matter what way we, we use to go into it. We can either click once on the icon at the bottom of the screen to go into Google Chrome, or we can double click the icon on the main desktop there to go into Google Chrome. Now, what if you had favorites in Internet Explorer that you wanted to bring into Google Chrome? Now, you can do this by clicking on the three vertical dots in the top right-hand corner of the screen, just below the cross. So move your mouse over the three vertical dots, left-click once, and then move your mouse down to bookmarks, and then this menu should appear either to the left or the right and move your mouse across and down to import bookmarks and settings. With your mouse over that, left click once. Okay, so it says import bookmarks and settings. It's asking us where do we want to import them from. So I'm going to click on that little drop down there and I'm going to select Microsoft Internet Explorer. So we can leave all of these ticked if you want or you can just bring over your perhaps your favorite bookmarks and saved passwords. So what I tend to do is I tend to move my mouse over the box just to the left of browsing history and untick that and also move my mouse over the box just to the left of search engines and left click that to take the ticks out of those because I don't really want to import those but that's again that's purely optional. So I've left favorites bookmarks ticked and saved passwords ticked then move the mouse over import and left click once. This bit might take a bit of time depending on how many bookmarks you've got or how many favorites you've got. When this appears, move your mouse over done, left click once. And you'll see there, imported from IE. So left click that and that is all of the bookmarks or the favorites that you've imported from Internet Explorer. And you could just click on them just to go into any website that uh, you've saved as a favorite. If you wanted to save another website as a favorite, we can say we can search for a website in the bar at the top there and say if I wanted to, to save BBC News as a favorite on there or a, a bookmark, should I say. All I do is I just go into the website that I want to save and just press, I move my mouse over and then just move my mouse over this star up here in the top right hand corner and left click once. And there we go, it asks us, is that okay as a name? If we, if we don't want that as a name, we wanna change it, then we can click into there and we can change it, again, purely optional. And it's saying, where do we wanna save it? In the bookmarks bar. The bookmarks bar is just at the top of the screen there, as you can see there. Or we could save it in another folder. So click choose another folder and we could save it in imported from IE, for instance. So I could click imported from IE, click save, and when I click imported from IE, there, there you go, BBC News is in there. But say if I wanted to save it on the bar at the top of the screen, I'm just gonna go into the BBC Sport website and wanna save that. So again, move my mouse over the star at the top right hand corner of the screen there, left click once. Again, I can change the name, so I'm just gonna get rid of the word home. Okay, so we're back to just BBC Sport and it's suggesting here that we save it in imported from IE. So I can just click done there if I want and that will save it straight into that folder just there. Or I can click the drop down, okay, and I can choose another area. So I can say I want that on the bookmarks bar. So left click bookmarks bar, left click done. And there you go, the shortcut for BBC Sport is just up there. And if ever I want to go into it, if ever I'm at another page, say for instance, I've just opened up Google Chrome, so I'm just going to shut it down and open it back up again. So if ever, like I say, I'm in Google Chrome and I want to go straight to BBC Sport, I can just click BBC Sport up there and there you go. It then takes me directly to BBC Sport. If I want to print anything off of Google Chrome, first of all, look on the page to see if you can see a printer icon. Some pages do have a printer icon, some don't. Uh, this particular page doesn't have 
a printer icon. So what we can do is we can move our mouse up to the three dots in the top right hand corner, left click once and just here there is a print button here so we can click print and we get a preview come up on the screen of whatever we're trying to print and then what we can do is we can just select our printer from destination there hopefully your printer should be listed there i haven't got any printers set up on this computer so uh, but your printer should be listed there just click on it and it will change to your printer and then all you do is you just then click print at the bottom of the screen there so there you go that showed you how to uh, tackle the message internet explorer is no longer supported and showed you how to download and install Google Chrome and gave you just a quick tutorial on how to use Google Chrome. Hope this guide helps. Thanks for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at CWTech. That's at CWTech on Twitter. And don't forget to check out my other videos in my YouTube channel. Just Google Chris Wait YouTube. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for your support.